So here's the patient. This is an 87-year-old with an STS of 9, a very ordinary high-risk uh, AS patient. Annulus measurements here on our sizing chart just right for a 25-millimeter lotus valve. And here's a picture at the level of the leaflets, and I think it's unambiguous. This is a bicuspid valve, and the presentation assignment was heavy calcification, and I think this fits the bill pretty well. Uh, a couple of uh, long axis views, and you can see that the calcium is indeed in the leaflets, nothing in the LVOT that looks meaningful. And here is a lotus valve implant immediately post-release. And I think uh, two things are apparent here. There is no paravalvular leak, which is our routine expectation, even in bicuspid valves with this device. And the frame really looks deformed. And I think uh, Sushil talked about the interventional cardiologist's drive to fix everything. Another drive we have is for symmetry. This really bothers us, I think, a lot. Here's the gradient. You might wonder, with that much deformation of the frame, is there a gradient? Pretty clear that the answer is no. And this is the punchline. Here are one- and two-year fluoroscopic images and gradients. And this is the these are the only images I've got. I don't, can't say when, between implant and one year, this valve smoothed out, but I think this is striking, and it highlights the basic properties of uh, the lotus valve, and that is that it is mechanically expanded, but it's still, a, after it's implanted, a nitinol self-expanding valve. And the uh, the fact that it expands, it find, that it finds its way slowly, both acutely and over the longer term, I think are interesting positive attributes uh, of the system. There, there are a few data in bicuspid populations. The best data we have are 31 cases out of the uh, Respond European Registry. And uh, what's striking is that in contrast to many other reports, there are no differences at all between the bicuspid group and the tri-leaflet group. Uh, and uh, PVL also, again, with the properties of the lotus and the ceiling screw, uh, skirt, seems not to be an uh, important issue. Again, not meaningfully different between the bicuspid and non-bicuspid populations. There are some other small reports. This is uh, from Jack last year. Very small number of patients, but no annulus rupture, again, because you don't smash anything. This is a slow expansion. Uh, no misses, no need for valve in valve. Uh, there's no post dilatation, uh, basically no PVL. And interestingly, I think as we all appreciate in the bicuspid population, because the frame of the valve is kept away from the uh, LVOT a little bit by the higher position that you get in a bicuspid, a remarkable for a first-generation Lotus, a very low pacing rate. Thank you. Michelle has a question. Uh, did you do BAB in this case? Uh, all of the cases that we've treated have had a BAB first, but they're usually pretty undersized. If you if you over there was a gradient, there was much more under expanded lotus. Or do well, you consider it's not releasing it because of do you, are there cases where it looks like this there where you consider not releasing the valve? I think you've asked uh, six questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very very Stop. very very, very small numbers of post dilated patients globally. And uh, we have a sizing chart for post-dil, and I can't remember it because we've never done it. There's really virtually no reason to post-dilate a lotus. Uh, an oversized balloon could disturb the lock, uh, but uh, the people who've been 
sort of driven to post dilate have it's been for deformed frames uh, rather than PVL and it's hard to say that it makes any difference uh, but it's definitely not recommended uh, was never done in the US trial or continued access registry um, so it's, it's that's really not an issue Yeah, not everybody did. This one actually wasn't recognized as a bicuspid until post hoc. <laughs> one one more the, question. You have preference of using uh, S3 or ORVAB uh, in bicuspids because not everybody has Lotus? Well, we don't have Lotus right now either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was being nice about yes, it. Yes, of course. Um, th that's an imponderable. You know, I think. Uh, there's a, a high level of recognition that the approved valves in the U.S. are not yet the ideal for bicuspid. Uh, I think results in bicuspid with both uh, Edwards and, and core valve are getting better as people understand uh, sizing and deployment and positioning, uh, post dilatation, the whole approach better. So uh, this, this is going to certainly be a developing story, but uh, very clear that the bicuspid population really needs a predictable solution.